No, we're not worried about the rankings or anything. You know, we just know that we have to go out there and focus on University of Ohio. Well, uh, this is actually my first time hearing about it because, you know, our coaches don't really pay attention to the outside sources or what goes on in the Internet. So this is actually my first time hearing about it. But you know, my reaction to it is, you know, uh, at the games, I sign autographs for uh, fans and children all the time. How kind of crazy does it seem to you that two years ago you were thinking about leaving? I mean, you, you know, you wanted to leave here, and now you're a high school trophy candidate. <laughs> It's very crazy, and it all happened so fast. You know, when you're a freshman, Coach Strong always talks about, you know, looking at the back row, the freshmen sitting in the back of the team meeting rooms. And he just he just reminds us of how how fast and how soon you'll be on that front row as a senior or as, or as an upperclassman. And time has just flown by, you know. It's been crazy because two years ago, I would have never thought that I would be in a you know, situation I'm in right now. And... And I'm just blessed to be in this situation. Were you at a point though where you had decided you you wanted to leave and you, your mom maybe told you to stick it out for another week or something? Yeah, it was during camp my freshman year. And um, I, had a, I had injured my index finger on my throwing hand. I had a stress fracture. And I was miserable because I couldn't practice. I couldn't get any reps. And, and at the time, I was competing with Will Stein to try to start uh, opening day. So it was hard having to uh, take that setback. And I didn't really know how to handle it. So it was so far away from home. I didn't have my mom, didn't have my family. And all I had was football. So it was it was tough. But at the end of the day, you know, I just had a decision to make. When you said this was the first you heard of the autograph, were you saying today is the first you heard of it or the last couple of days? Yeah, the last couple of days was the first time I actually started hearing about my name being involved in it. So did the school ask you about it? Uh, yes. You know, I talked with uh, John yesterday. He and Coach Strong, and you know, we sat down and talked, and we discussed everything. Does it bother you that people are having, you know, your autograph on a helmet for like 250 bucks on, online? It doesn't bother me at all because you know, when when we have days like Fan Day or after games when fans and children come out, you know, that's what we do it for the fans and the children. So, you know, as long as it's going for a good cause in my eyes to the children and to the fans on Fan Day, you know, I have no problem with it. But as far as selling it, you know, I have no control over that. You know, my, the days that we have design, uh, signings, you know, fan day or for the little kids at camps, you know, that, those are the uh, autographs that, you know, I cherish the most. Are you going to be suspicious of those kids now that they're going to give <laughs> <laughs> oh, Not at all, not at all. Because, you know, um, you know, I love to see every child smile. And I, around here, you know, um, we're role models to a lot of children. So being able to just give back to those children, it just means a lot to us. Oh, yes, and that was pretty much one of my biggest things I had to learn coming to college because before I was a yes man. But um, I've learned to uh, just say no because you don't, you don't have to feel obligated to do anything. So just being able to say no in a nice way, you know, it's been pretty easy. <laughs> Well, I'm a homebody. I sit in the house. I'll play NCAA all day, NCAA football all day. And, uh, you know, a lot of people look at it as me just playing a video game, but I take it as me taking extra reps, virtual reps. You know, since I can't, since, <laughs> since I can't be on the practice field 24-7, you know, I call it virtual reps, and, and I just have a blast. <laughs> Are you always little? Yes, always, always. <laughs> I don't I don't pay attention to it at all because you know I'm like I said I'm blessed to even be on the game and you know at the end of the day I don't play you know college football for money or anything I'm here for my education and that's something that I value the most so you talk about the team what about for yourself I mean is there some pressure you feel on your shoes all the now there's no pressure at all you know I never feel any pressure because I trust preparation. You know, I trust our coaching staff and I trust my teammates. And as long as I have that trust in those guys and they have that trust in me, it's never any pressure. Do you enjoy it? I mean, is it fun? 
this all the time and so far you the ESPN and you know the crowds that are always gonna be well, I mean, is that fun for you? Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I pretty much tolerate it because uh you know, I was never the type of guy who, who loved doing interviews and anything, but you know, I've learned to you know, every time I'm giving an interview or every time I have to tell my story, you know, you never know who it impacts. And that's something my mom always tells me. So you know, I've just been uh, accepting my role and, you know, cherishing every interview that I've done. Have you talked about the team getting complacent? I would just remind ourselves of what happened last year when we got complacent. You know, um, we hit a brick wall and we fell two games straight. So, you know, now that we've uh, experienced that last year, you know, and we're a year older, guys are more mature. You know, everyone, no one wants to see that happen again. Teddy, can you speak to how like great the past time in the past two days you've had thousand plus fans oh, yeah. back to the Sugar Bowl. Oh, the fans have been tremendous, and you know they've been uh, very supportive. And uh, like I said, uh, back at the Sugar Bowl, you know, we won that game because of the fans. You know, because of our, because of our fan support, and they've been loyal to us and to Coach Strong since he first arrived on campus. And we just appreciate every opportunity that. Um, we get it. We, we appreciate every opportunity we get, you know, to give back to them, whether it be in practice and open practice, uh, scrimmage, or on game day. And you know, their support has played a tremendous role in our success, also. Teddy, with all the projections, do you view this season, even as your junior year, as a senior season? Oh, not at all, because you know, at the end of the day, I know I still have two more years of eligibility left. So, you know, I'm nowhere near senior. <clears throat> Uh, Coach Watson always tells us, you know, the quarterback has to be the eye of the hurricane, you know, the, the smoothest and the calmest person on the field. So in my mind, as I'm dropping back, that's what I'm thinking, remain poised and remain calm at all times. Teddy, can you talk about some of the refinements that, you, that you've made flash? I mean, as successful as it was, what things do you feel like you really have to improve upon this year? I've become more of a, a demanding leader. You know, I'm not – I've become more vocal and um, – you know, I, I won't tolerate, you know, any bad reps in practice as to uh, two years ago or a year ago, you know, you didn't really cherish the reps the way you cherish them now. But, you know, every second, every snap, every play counts. And that's just one of the, the biggest steps I felt that I've made so far coming from last year into this season. And also just polishing up my game, whether it be in the run game or the passing game. Um, you know, you can always uh, cut down on the interception ratio, so that's something I'm aiming to improve on. And my completion percentage also, because um, last year it left a lot of balls and completions on the field. So, you know, you just want to do the little things, whether it be footwork, following through, throwing the ball, and just trying to be the perfect passer. Coach Watson talked about you controlling your emotions. How much pressure do you feel like you put on yourself to I haven't put any pressure on myself at all because, like I said, um, I never feel any pressure because of great coaching and because of uh, preparation. You know, Coach Watson every week, you know, whether it be Monday when we first come into the um, facility, you know, he lays out the game plan or he asks me what I feel comfortable with. And once once you have that relationship with your coach, you never feel any pressure, really. Can you get so comfortable used to a center? Uh, it's been it's been pretty different, but Jake, you know, he's a he's a great athlete, and he's been able to play guard. He's played some tackle, and now he's playing center. So, you know, even though Mario was the starter last year, Jake still has that knowledge because he learned under Mario. So it's like we're not we're not really missing a beat. Is that something that you kind of worry about? All that all the change that's off the floor. Is that something you worry about? Oh, not at all. Because that's that's where the trust comes in. You know, I trust that those guys up front will do their job, and they trust each other that they'll do that they'll do their jobs also. So, dropping back, you know, you just trust the system, trust your wideouts, trust that the backs will protect, and trust the offensive line. What's it gonna be like with all the different personnel packages that you guys throw at? Is that 
Oh, yeah. It's pretty exciting to know that, you know, you have a guy like Ryan Hubble who can line up at wide receiver, Jalen Harrington, Gerald Christian. Then we have running backs who are, who are explosive. So we have different packages. We get Dominique back, Sonoris back off, his, off of his injury. And, you know, we're going to do a lot of things with those guys that we weren't able to do last year. And it's pretty exciting being a quarterback to be involved because, um, you know, you never know who the ball is going to go to when you're, when you're on the defense. Oh, none of them, because uh, they know. Yeah, probably Michael Lee only. <laughs> but uh, nah, no, none of them really uh, is in my ear about throwing on the ball because they understand the offense. Also, they understand that you know, in our offense, we throw off movement keys. So um, when I'm dropping back, a wide receiver will know if they're getting the ball before I even throw the ball because that's just the uh, coverage rec recognition that they have. And Coach Dugas has done a great job of just raising them and teaching them to read coverage also. As a person, you know, um, I think people fail to realize what type of person he is because uh, so far since he's been here, he's been a great guy. Uh, he's been very social with, with, with the guys on the team, and everyone has just welcomed him. And uh, as far as his play, you know, we'll find out uh, – what type of player he really is once we put the pass on because, you know, you can't just judge a guy off of gym short practices. Coach Strong said that you were one of the guys that talked with Michael Dyer when he was on his visit. What was it that you were wanting to get from him or wanting to learn from him when you had a conversation with him about coming to I just wanted to learn what type of person he was and uh, learn the real him because, um, you know, you hear the stories in the media about what type of person he is. But um, I just wanted to take a chance and get to know him myself. Teddy, the media, a lot of the national media, it doesn't impact us at all because we know that we can't control, you know, our schedule. All we can do is go out and play the games. And, um, you know, we don't worry about the schedule at all because we know that each week we're going to get our opponents best. And um, it's not like each opponent that we play is going to just come out and lay down. You know, we still have to go out and earn it. And that's why Coach Watson has us wearing these bracelets now saying earn it because we know nothing is going to be handed to us. How many guys wear bracelets? The whole team. Uh, I think the defense wears them also. I know the entire offense wears them. Nah. You know, like I said, every time I signed, it's been whether it was fan day or after the game, little children, the little children camps. So, uh, never. You know, the, the linebacker core, you know, linebacker is a tough position to play at the college level. And um, Keith Kelsey, you know, he, he's been doing a great job of just, you know, Learning the defense and understanding what they're trying to do, and uh, he's shown some flashes so far. Where did number five come from? Uh, I just started wearing number five when I was younger, and um, I looked it up in the Bible one time, and it stood for redemption. So, um, you know, I just wear it for that reason, you know, for redemption. Even though um, I'm not out for redemption or anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, it's always been my favorite number also. You talked about your license being a video game and we're talking about people selling your autographs. Is it secular at all that other people can make money off of your name and, and you can't? Uh, not at all because I know that uh, if all of my hard work on this level pays off, then, you know, I'll be able to make money on the next level. So I just feel that, you know, my education is priceless. You can't put a price tag on that. So uh, as long as I'm able to just get a quality education and a great education, and you know, I have no problem with, you know, the guys out there doing what they're doing. Teddy, what's your relationship like with Bull Gardner? What have you done to try and help progress him as a quarterback? Oh, my relationship is with, with Will Gardner is similar to the relationship uh, Will Stein and I had. You know, when I arrived, um, he was going into his junior year, and uh, it's pretty much the same with Will Gardner, even though he redshirted, but um, you know, I've been the guy to push him, and uh, Coach Watts has raised him to try to chase me, as I did with Will Stein, you know, because competition brings out the better you. So um, my job has just been that second pair of eyes. If I see something that he didn't see in practice, you know, I'll 
pull them to the side, hey, you missed this, or great job doing that. So we just have that type of relationship. I've been very comfortable. You know, we worked all summer long, and even when he moved to Santa during spring, you know, uh, our work began then, and it hasn't stopped yet. You know, we take reps, we take snaps just about every day. Teddy, anybody on the team beat you in NCAA? Are you the uh, ah, man. <laughs> uh, I don't think I, I don't think I played anyone in the new NCAA yet. So, I played a couple guys online, but I've been beaten online. You know, the guys. They glitch me and everything, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good check.